All right, Coach, I think we're ready whenever you are. All right, hold on. My glasses are dirty. <laughs> All right. Hope everybody's doing good. Uh, what a great weekend. Uh, great win over Miami and uh, extremely honored and proud of the team and our staff for how they bonded and responded. And, uh, you know, we've beaten two of the more storied programs in college football uh, in Clemson and Miami in back-to-back -back weeks. And that occurred because of a very dedicated effort uh, from a great staff and players um, that fought and fought and fought and executed longer and fought harder than our opponent and found ways to win playing with each other. Well, it's a tough team. Uh, no matter what, this team fights, and I'm proud of that. And no matter what, I'm very proud of them for that. And it was a heck of a football game Saturday night. Um, great environment. Great environment. Game day atmosphere. Awesome. Awesome crowd noise. Thankful. That's what it's supposed to feel like, supporting your team that's battling and fighting and so much better uh, than we had in, in some previous games where we could have used that. It was phenomenal and uh, thankful. You know, it was two really physical groups in that game battling. The line of scrimmage was hard fought. And uh, both fronts, uh, O-lines, D-lines, it was a slugfest in there. And I uh, thought our guys did a good job and uh, came down really to a pivotal moment, you know, um, goal line stand. And, and that moment, um, like I said, after the game, they put in some big guys. We put in some big guys and we stopped them. And Shy Battle came off the edge and did a great job on a play. And really cool, you know, to stop them there on the three. Defense is tired. Offense had just had three straight, three and outs. And then they come out and go on a 97-yard touchdown drive. Uh, to make it a two-possession game, huge sequence in that game, and some pivotal third downs, you know, a, a third down completion uh, from MJ to KC kind of sparked the drive, and then a third down um, run by Brennan, uh, another great play, and then they gave us a penalty on that play with their guy on our sideline and turned into the game, you know, and then the takeaways on defense um, to put it away at the end. But uh, positives on offense, I thought we played really hard up front and uh, battled against a tremendous D-line. Uh, we averaged four yards a carry against that group. We only had five plays in our backfield uh, by a team that averages well over that. I thought our backs did a better job. We ran hard. Obviously, Kendrick had an exceptional run. But we had more yards after first contact, and that was one of our goals in that room this week more explosive plays than we had the week before. And uh, I really thought Anthony Belton and Jacarius Peak at tackle played their best games for us. Both of them um, had more pancakes than they've had. They played against two really good edge players and um, proud of them. You know, negatives, the, the two pre-snap penalties, um, those were not needed, obviously, and, and poor focus and uh, can't happen. Things we got to do better. You know, in the red zone twice, we got field goals instead of touchdowns, things that we can get better at and finish drives. But overall, I thought against a really good defense, the offense did a good job, especially when we needed them. You know, on defense was probably one of our better performances. Uh, four takeaways, a goal line stand, gave up no touchdowns um, the entire game. No explosive plays for scores or sudden change defense. When you come out after the offense turns the ball over twice, we get turnovers right back two for two. Uh, third down, we were 13 to 17 efficient. And all night I felt like their quarterback was was uh, frustrated. And so great job by Tony Gibson and his staff and the players. And uh, it was fun. It was fun to have a game like that against such a good team. They got good players. Their tailback's an impressive young player. Um, special teams, I thought, you know, Braden, again, comes in two for two. Caden Nunkester uh, averaged over 41-yard net. Anthony Smith continues to get down the field and help us in coverage units. And and I thought um, we did a good job pressuring the rugby punter. He's really caused some problems for some teams. Jalen Coit makes really good decisions back there. So great win. Uh, now moving on to uh, in-state. Great game against uh, Coach Clawson and his team, Wake Forest. They've always done such a good job there. They're well coached. They play hard. Um, they had a couple extra days. I don't know if they used them for rest or not, but they played on Thursday, so they get a few extra days for this one than we do. And um, 
it's an old, old rivalry game, one of the oldest out there. And, and I've had a lot of close ones with them, a lot of nail biters, uh, one possession games. They play hard. And they do. And uh, they're better than their record. They've had some one possession losses. You know, offensively, we know they're unique and different um, with the timing of their system. Uh, they're very good at it. Their own line's experienced. They have big receiver. Uh, Morin's been around a long time, number two for them. And uh, running back, good rotation. The O-line's big, and they play well together, and they just get it. They know what they're doing. They've been in the same system a long time. And the quarterback, even though he's a first-year starter, has been there a long time. And you can see that he knows how to operate. You know, their defense, I think their front's impressive. They play hard. I think their D-line coach does a really good job fundamentally. Number 30 and number 91 are playmakers. They're twitchy. They, they get off blocks. Their safety, number three, makes a ton of plays for him. He's all over the field. Uh, and they're very sound. You know, they've got a very experienced staff on defense. And uh, you can tell that they've worked together for quite a while. So excited for the next opportunity and get a chance to go on the road and uh, play a good football team that's very well coached. Questions? James. Yeah, Dave, uh, you've talked about limiting the um, the explosive plays here the last few weeks defensively. Just the job your corners have done here and, and contributing to that, Shaheem and Aiden, because I, it just feels like a lot of times that starts outside. Yeah, they both played really well uh, the last two games. I think Shai just played his best game, Shai Battle. I was really proud of him. I told him that yesterday. Uh, in the run game, how he tackled, in the pass game, how he defended, and his technique, he was trusting his training and Played really well. Obviously, uh, Aiden had a huge interception in that game. And so those two guys are playing at a high level, and, and uh, they're very confident. Jaden? Hey, Dave. After the bye week, you said that the coaching staff had really approached this um, preached about this being, you know, a five game season, a four game season, um, and now a three game season. And it seems to have really worked. Um, do you know why that specific approach has really resonated with the team? Yeah, I think sometimes, um, uh, we all get hung up in the past and, um, not that the past doesn't matter. It does, but you know, being more in the moment and understanding what you still have left to play for, uh, to me was the right thing to do at that time. And uh, as a, a unique team, you know, I've had over 40 new players, two new coaches, a lot of change, a lot of 10 guys from our roster last year got NFL tryouts and you know, we lost some talent and we had some good players coming in and, and some guys were getting their, their chance, you know, the Jalen Scott's that have been waiting their turns and, so it's just taking some time. And um, that bye week really allowed me a chance to reflect and, and kind of put pen to paper on, hey, here, here's what we need to be for these next five weeks, offense, defense, special teams, and really not sell it, but just make sure they understand it and get everyone's buy-in on it. Staff first, then players, and everybody's done a good job and they understand what there is. And it's, you know, everything we can do to just win the next game. That's it. Forget about the past. You know, don't think about the end. Think about today, you know, and, and I know that's easier said than done, but our guys bought into that. And, uh, you know, at that time, there was a lot of negativity coming out of our Duke loss and, and deservedly so not to um, take anything away from what Duke is or a good program, but we didn't play well in that game. And so our guys were pissed and coaches were as well. And we wanted to get better. And I felt like that was the best approach was to focus on what we can do, not what we haven't done. Uh, Stone. Hey, Coach, again, congrats on the win. Um, after the game, I had prematurely asked a question about your upcoming matchups, so I just wanted to come back and uh, <laughs> find out a bit more info um, and just see after your two impressive home wins and these next two road games, what's the biggest thing you think you guys want to focus on this upcoming week and bring to both of those matchups? Yeah, appreciate the follow-up, Stone. Um yeah, excited about the matchup with Wake. You know, I think um, it's a team that uh, doesn't beat itself, very experienced, uh, ton of continuity in their systems. The guys know it inside and out. You can see that on film. They play really hard. It doesn't matter who you watch them play. 
Uh, you see the same thing. Guys just playing hard, you know. They're sound. And so that's the matchup. You got to go earn this one. And I think that's one thing our team has figured out. Like, if you don't beat yourself and you play really, really hard, longer than the guy across from you, you're going to win. And we got to keep doing it. You know, we got to be able to continue the process of, of being consistent from that standpoint. And so that's what I look forward to is that challenge uh, with this matchup with Wake Forest is, you know, all right, you just beat Clemson, you just beat Miami. Now here's the next team that we got to go try to beat and understand they're not easy to beat in their stadium. You know, it's a place a lot of people go down and fail at. So a lot of focus is going to be on how do we go down there and be the best team we can be. Ethan. And coach, you mentioned how far this rivalry stretched back and with the new ACC scheduling model, now they're a protected rival again. Um, were you excited to see that you guys will be playing Wake Forest every single year? Yeah, it's kind of funny, you know, like beginning of the season, the, the rivalry was going to end every year and uh, now it's back. So we never had that miss, which is good. Uh, I love that we're playing all three other schools in state every year for at least the next seven, it says. So. I think that's awesome. I would I would uh, be in favor of a trophy, you know, for whoever wins the most in-state games uh, between the four of them, paint each side of it the school color and let that team keep it. You know, I think it'd be awesome to have some kind of trophy for the four teams moving forward after the season because we are actually going to have bragging rights for a whole year based on that. And But uh, we'll see if anyone bites on that one, but we'll put it out there. Uh, but it's going to be fun to have, you know, the opportunity to play Duke, play Wake, play UNC every season. And, you know, occasionally we'll get um, one of the mid um, non-power five, you know, ECU uh, app or Charlotte on our rotation. I know the other schools are as well. And so we'll see how that all plays out. But it's awesome if you look at the geography of it, because these leagues across the country are becoming less geography or coming the entire country. Like we're going to have two California schools and a Texas school. Uh, I love that our pod is local. I think that's great for us. Noah. Hey coach, you kind of touched on it, but you know, Braden's made his nine last kicks, you know, what is it like for you to kind of see him, you know, get into a rhythm after, you know, going two for four to start? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy for him and just knock on wood, everybody. Um, but he's been consistent, he's confident, he's got a good routine, and you just got to keep him in that one kick at a time. James? Dave, I think your next two games, starting with Wake, are senior days for your opponent. Um, just in terms of going on the road and, and being in on that side of that matchup, do you prepare any differently? I mean, what's that like being the visitor for that? You know, I uh, hadn't thought about it, James. You know, I think uh, it is a moment, a moment for those teams. Um, it's not a moment for the visiting team. You know, we're just going out there to play them. And we know that if it is their senior day, it's going to be emotional for their players. Um, and being a part of that on my side, it doesn't equal a win. You still got to go execute and, and play well. And so for us, regardless of what that day is for them, we have to go play better than Wake Forest, you know, and know that there is going to be some extra emotion before the game, probably for their sideline. But, you know, we've got to do four quarters or more of playing better than that other team. That's what wins games, playing smarter, playing harder, playing tougher, playing more together and, you know, take that part of it out because it's not going to dictate how the game's played. It's just going to dictate the pre-game pre emotion of it for them. Mm-hmm. Thanks. You're welcome. Rob? Yes, sir. Is uh, Wake Forest, their offense, is that a hard offense to simulate and scout on, on a game week? Yeah, it can be. You know, it takes a little bit of work with your scout team coaches and, and really the timing of when they do do the, you know, the, the mesh, slow mesh, as people like to call it. Um, we've been doing it for a long time here since they installed it. And so, I mean, our guys – have a better feel for it probably because we play against them every year. Um, even our scout team guys that are back. So I'm pretty confident we'll get a good look, but it's not the same, obviously, as game day. It's always going to be a little bit of an adjustment there. Noah? Brennan had kind of a lot of success on the ground, especially on that, that last drive to kind of set up that touchdown. You know, what did you kind of like seeing from that and kind of see him stick with 
kind of this role? Because you know, the first couple of times you guys used it, it didn't, you know, find much success, but he kind of stuck with it and, and broke off some big runs. Yeah, he ran really hard. Uh, he definitely gave us some valuable yards in the game. And and uh, the, the one option play that he ducked up inside was a huge play in the game. Uh, he's tough, resilient, and um, it was great to hear the crowd cheer for him, you know, as the game went on. I think they were really pulling for him to get in the end zone there at the end. And I can't say enough about uh, his perseverance. Uh, he's been through a lot since the Louisville game, and I think he's in a great headspace right now. So, Coach and I has always been a creative guy that tries to find ways to use his players. And obviously Brennan brings that to the game. You know, he brings another guy that can go in and make plays. Ethan. Coach, I wanted to ask about Davin Van because, you know, even when he's not piling up a ton of sacks or a ton of tackles, it seems like he's reliably collapsing pockets. Just how much of an impact does that have in just disrupting um, yeah. quarterbacks like Tyler Van Dyke? Wasn't that a great play at the end of the game by him? You know, you see him dive and miss him and then swipe again and get him after splitting a double team. Like, you talk about a guy that plays so hard, you know. I mean, his his desire to make plays and strain, uh, I love that. And uh, that was a great play by Davin. He's having a heck of a year. Uh, he's one of those dudes. It's just uh, he's a tone setter. You know, he's going to play so hard every snap. And and to your point, whether he's making the play or just disrupting the play, he's in there. And you better know where number one's at because he's coming. He's going to play hard. And he's going to probably chase that football until he's fatigued, you know. And then we're going to roll him and get him back in when he's ready. And uh, very proud of him. And he's definitely worn the number one the right way this season. Rob? Yeah, Dave, in the uh, build up to breaking the school record, I think you mentioned that there were chances maybe where you could have left. Uh, I would imagine Dave Clawson's probably had some of those same chances, but he's decided to stay at Wake Forest as well. Uh, to have coaches that have extended tenures uh, at schools like this, do you see that as something that adds value to the ACC and adds value to these uh, sort of rivalry matchups? Good question. You know, I, I think if you look at our league, uh, Dabo, I know, is in the top seven for longevity. Um, I'm in the top eight. Kloss is one year behind me. So that's on a national stage I'm talking about, not just the ACC. Um, so I, I would think that that's meaningful in the league. I don't know because I don't sit in those those meetings and hear about the, that kind of talk. But from a rivalry standpoint, I would think. I would think that the sustainable product that those three coaches – Myself and Dave and Dabo have put together a, you know, consistent product of winning. And uh, obviously Dabo, two national championships in his time, should speak volumes for those schools. But sometimes, you know, you're only as good as your last game. And uh, that's unfortunate. But I got great respect for Dave. We've, we've competed against each other since the MAC when I was at NIU. He was at Bowling Green. And so I've known him a long time and uh, think a lot of him. And he's done a great job at Wake Forest. He really has. Ethan. And Coach, right before um, this press conference, Peyton Wilson made the Buckkiss Award semifinalist list. Um, just, I know you've talked about how well he's playing this season, but why is he a deserving um, potential winner of that award? Well, you know, I don't get to watch all the teams play, and I know there's so, a lot of good players, so don't, I don't want this to come across like uh, I'm demeaning anyone else, but he is the best defensive player in college football right now. What, what his impact is on the field during a game, um, I, I just don't know if anyone has that on their team. You know, he's impacting the course of the game throughout the game and every game. And it's not like he just has a good game every now and then. Like every game, he could be the defensive player of the week in the ACC. And I think sometimes he probably doesn't get it because they want to reward somebody else. You know, he is all over the field playing at a high level in every facet, fitting the run, blitzing the run, dropping into coverage, rushing the passer, helping us on special teams, leading in the locker room, leading in the community, doing it all. And so he's very, very deserving of semifinalist and in my opinion of the entire award when it's done. And I know we're not done. There's still work to do, but I'm thankful that they did put him on their list. It means a lot. 
uh, for him. I think it's a great award. Dick Buckkiss, one of the toughest dudes out there to be on a list. I think he's very, very representative of what that list is about. And I look forward to seeing him on stage accepting that trophy, hopefully here. That would be awesome for him and his family through what he's been through and his story. Thank you. Hey. Coach, when we spoke to you on Saturday night, um, you were very reflective on breaking the 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 record for all-time wins at NC State. Curious what the rest of your weekend was like. I know you said you had family and friends in town and just kind of getting a chance to celebrate with the people that have helped you uh, reach that yeah. goal. Yeah, it was awesome. You know, uh, after the game, uh, obviously Sarah and, and Luke and Connor were in the tunnel and hugging up on them and walked up the tunnel with them and all my friends, uh, close friends from Drake, where I went to school, were at eight of them here. And then uh, two of our really close friends from Wisconsin were here. Um, and then, you know, did the press conference and the huddle show and all that. And we went out to the parking lot and just had a nice little tailgate, you know, and several of our coaches and their families were down there and had some music playing on the, the music or on the uh, boom box they had down there, the Bluetooth thing. And, uh, we just sat there till two or three in the morning, just laughing and joking and enjoying each other's company, catching up. It was awesome. It was awesome. And uh, to be able to do that with Sarah and, and Luke was there with us and all my friends. And, you know, a few of the, the boosters came over to, to say thank you. It was fun. And um, woke up the next day and turned the page and got ready for the next one. And yesterday was hurting a little bit but you know what real quick turn on the film like, all right here we go you know and get ready for the next one have a couple cups of coffee and yeah let's go and get ready for the next game and excited you know to have another opportunity to go compete james yeah dave you've now you now have a uh a four game sample size of mj this year where are some areas you'd like to see him improve uh at that position yeah, you know, I think there was one play in my uh, early in the game where he could have looked off a, a middle safety uh, on a throw he made to KC. You know, just just little things. He's he's very confident. He's comfortable. He throws a catchable ball. He's tough, and uh, the game continues to slow down for him. But there's just little things within routes where you see something in a coverage, and maybe you can help yourself with your eyes on things like that. Uh, it is a, a game that requires so much and and the more you play it the better you get you know and so he's three and one as a starter he's really worked hard and you know i know he'll continue to grow and get better thanks dave yep all right i got to get to another meeting guys thank you have a great day thanks everybody